Hello everyone, my name is Majid Masali. I'm still PhD candidate from Western Michigan University. I am working on a LiDAR and laser scanner. Today I'm going to talk about the challenges and opportunity of using LiDAR and laser scanner in smart city application. Me and Dr. O was working on that project with the other faculty member from Western Michigan University. Today I'm going to talk about the introduction to remote sensing technology and smart city application, laser scanner, challenge and benefit. LiDAR challenge and benefit and conclusion. Uh, remote sensing and vision-based sensor supplies a wealth source of data integrating and computerizing this type of the data can help city official to pose as useful data. And in the smart cities, a live automated urban component detect and evaluation process are necessary and it's important right now. Remote sensing sensors such as a LiDAR and laser scanner supply a 3D set of data that you can use in each steps of the decision making process in city and the point cloud data will be used to extract a different 3D object in urban element decision. Uh, a smart city is a complex management system that that can have that project failure can have important effect on each side of the city and they develop and deploy effective service for complex projects. So technology in a smart city offer the integrated solution to implement complex issue in a sustainable way in mega cities and smart cities. Smart cities these days rely on a smart community and the smart community rely on connected vehicle. And the connected vehicle mostly right now it's rely on autonomous vehicle. And the autonomous vehicle these days rely on the big data processing. So big data processing is one of the most important aspect of the smart city these days. Uh, right now, smart city operation plans is based on four phases, planning, design, implementation, and operation. For one of, like for each of these phases, we have to have accurate uh, data and the data processing is play an important role for each step of these four phases. Remote sensing uh, play an important role in a complex environment. Road features are becoming more complex day to day. We have the more complex curb, ramp, intersection, highway. With a new uh, autonomous vehicle, they can be more complex and more complex day to day. So based off that, we try to do break it down in two sides, infrastructure improvement and analyzes human driving behavior. For the infrastructure improvement, we try to use the ADA as one of the most important regulation and standard uh, that called American with Disability Act. And for analyzing human driver behavior, we try to do motorist and pedal cyclist interactions. So we try to detect the vehicles and uh, bicycles and find the interaction between the uh, bicyclists and motorists for that too. So why we are talking about the remote sensing? Because the remote sensing is an important emerging technology that small, low cost, low power, multifunction sensors and producing high resolution data that, can be a, that could be a primary source of data for many complex dynamic urban environments. So uh, a high resolution data is not only can be used to extract and assess a static object, but can be used for the dynamic object, object action, uh, uh, object, uh, object detection. So analyzing human driving behavior to identify the variable definition challenge object and maneuvers is visible with the remote sensing technology. Laser scanner is breaking down in two sides, laser scanner, uh, can do uh, stationary. That's a picture that you are seeing on top, uh, top pictures is a laser scanner C10. That one is stationary. So everyone that you want to, every time that you want to make a scan, you have to make it the balance and everything and connect that one to the computer to scan the environment. And they can scan up to 50,000 points per second. And took two to five minutes for each time that you are scanning the environment. However, the LiDAR is another technology that can uh, detect up to 60,000 points per second and can do continuously measurement and capturing the data. 
So the LiDAR can install on top of the Segway, the LiDAR can install on top of the vehicle, the LiDAR can install on top of the bicycle. So we don't basically have that too much limitation with the LiDAR if you have the moving object. So after that, it's object detection in the data or the result of the data that you are getting from the remote sensing. So the LiDAR and laser scanner collect information based on the distance from the laser scanner or LiDAR. And the LiDAR and laser scanner are widely used 3D modeling creation in point cloud data. Obje and then you have to classify the object in point cloud data. So it is essential to extract objects such as the edge, pedestrian, curves, vehicles, and etc. So clustering can create a set of meaningful subclasses of the data that you can analyze and use in uh, different purposes. This one is a picture of the result of point cloud data from the laser scanner. Each color that you can see here is a one-time scanning. So every time that we scan one area and we connect it to the next one, it's shown in one color. So we put all of them in one picture that you can see all of that. So the blue color, the green color, the pink color, the red color is meaning of one-time scanning with a laser scanner. So the data gonna be look like that. So it's important to detect the object in that environment. We have around 70 million points of data in top pictures. So we have too much of the data to analyze that one, to detect the object that you are looking for. So right now, is, I'm talking about more laser scanner challenge and benefits. So for that one, we were, I, as I told you, the ADA, American with Disability Act, is one of the base regulations that we were used. So ADA is 1990 uh, law that included of the civil rights law that required the same generation, same general protection for individuals with disability. And the ADA intend to address all public facilities in the long term provide the services and the focus has been the assorted variable including topography, accessible road and curves. And also detecting the status of road route, accessibility in essentials in the analysis. So, just to give, give you an example how that's gonna be taught. So for accessible guideline for accessible roads, the maximum allowable running grade without handrail should be 5%. The maximum allowable running cross slope should be 2%. And the maximum allowable vertical challenge in level should be 6.4 millimeters. So for that one, we developed a methodology how we can get the data and how we can analyze the data. The laser scanner for, uh, we have to get the data, analyze the data, use the pass through elevation filter, outlier removal filter, and then compute plane surface. And find, the, and then classify the data based of the sidewalk and the curb ramp. So, and then feature extraction based off the data that we extracted. For example, if we extracted the curb ramps, we have to measure the width, the length, and the slope of that curb ramps. So, for that one, we had a case study. We used the business district of the Kalamazoo, Michigan. The area is located in a business district with the various publics and commercial buildings. So as you can see here, that's a green line here is a road of the laser scanner that we scan the environment. And the down picture is not very clear, but is the 3D screenshot of the point cloud data that we had. So I'm gonna talk about the result for one of the intersections that we had, that one is a sidewalk. As you can see that the top pictures. So that's a top view. And that one is a front view. And you can see the curb ramps on, on that one. Here is the top view with the point cloud data information. So how is that gonna be look like in our point cloud data environment? And the down one is the result. As you can see here, each rectangular here representative of one surface. So each surface there has a different slope. So in one side, as you can see here, we have a three, four different slope. That's very important. So uh, after that one, we analyze the data for the slopes and uh, for the curb ramps and for the sidewalk ramps. As you can see here, I've just put the number for that one, one to, one to eight. And the red color, number two and three, did not pass the regulation. We already developed the automated method that can measure and compare the existing infrastructure 
based off the laser scanner and comparing with the existing infrastructure and say this is infrastructure passing the regulation or not. So that's we, at the end, we're understanding that we can use laser scanner to detect the object very, very accurate. So usually the accuracy we compare with the manual measurement, with our own proposed method, and the accuracy was 99.8%. That one is the uh, laser scanner side, and then we move to the LiDAR challenge and benefits. So as I told you, the LiDAR is a continuous object detection process or a scanning environment. So the LiDAR is this type of environment. As you can see, this is picture of the one frame of the LiDAR. So you can see the trees here, the kind of like a building at, around the trees and all that type of things. So, so the transportation more are getting more complex these days. So more complicated interaction between the vehicles and bicycles and analyzing driver behavior is a critical topic in the traffic engineering and management and developing a platform to detect object and measurement is desirable right now for every city all around the nation. This one is the very short video of the laser LiDAR. And as you can see here, the LiDAR is moving and they can detect the object like the, the, the vehicles, the building, and all that type of object that they are moving. And also in the right picture, you can see the exact location of the LiDAR on top of the every devices that you put. So you have the accurate GPS information, and also you have the different information from the environment of the LiDAR that you have. So, so the data processing of the LiDAR is very important. So we have to smart segmentation in region of interest, segmentation in timestamp, X and Y dimension, vehicle detection and clustering, point cloud data class classification, overtaking maneuver, and the maneuver detection. So that one was important. So our study, limit, uh, our study was limited to 33 feet far from the location of the LiDAR. It's the latitude, and the longitude is 18 feet from the LiDAR. So we have to keep the information belong to the area that we are, is our interest. So we already did the multi-corridor scans and, excellent, uh, and excluded the point was not belong to the object that was our purposes. Our purposes was vehicle and uh, bicycle. So here it was the first result that we got. That one is uh, the, the left picture is the unprocessed LiDAR data for the vehicle. And the right picture is we are excluded automatically the vehicle information. So we have clear all the information that we don't need it, and we just keep the uh, information that was related to the object that was our interest. And uh, then we have to classify the data. So the automated approach uh, using the measure range data was developed and, uh, and accurate identification was uh, achieved and the algorithms would limit the point to the detect because it's very important to we have the low, uh, low data, the, the number of the data. We have the less number of the data because 60,000 points per second is mean a lot. When we are going to the data processing, we have the billion, billion point that need to process. So the smaller size of the data at the final the data set point would reduce the processing. It's important how, like, how we can get the data. 60,000 point time by the second or minutes is very uh, big number that need to process at the time. So they need really, really powerful computer to analyze that information that sometimes is not desirable for autonomous vehicle that we have right now. So for maneuver detection, we already have the three phases, approaching phases, passing zone, and continuous driving zone. So for approaching phases, we detect front right side of the vehicle as the point that needs to be analyzed. And in the passing zone, whole picture, the middle of the picture, when they are parallel with, with the LiDAR. And at the C, you see the continuing driving when the vehicle passing the bicycle or passing the LiDAR. So let me talk about the uh, overtaking maneuver. The different variable affect overtaking maneuver uh, scenarios, including of geographic condition, 
a speed limitation, vehicle speed and the bicycle speed. So overtaking happened in five phases. Approaching phase, steering away, passing, steering back, and continue driving. So the key element of the overtaking are the time of observation. So we developed another methodology for that one. We put the LiDAR on top of the bicycle. We equip the bicycle with the batteries and the LiDAR and camera and everything. And then we analyze the data. And then we clean the data, do the static outlier removal, vehicle detection, object of interest detection, and then uh, find the part of the object of interest. So like right front side of the vehicle or back side of the vehicle. That one is we limit the number of the data and point that we have to process. So we already tested the data in two cities, in a Lansing and South Bend. Lansing, it was in Michigan, and the South Bend was Indiana. And then we got the result for that. So we already set up the bicycle, as shown here. So we put the LiDAR, we put the camera and the GPS. So to produce the uh, point cloud and the video frames and latitude and longitude information related to objects that are passing our, uh, our bicycle. Uh, city selection. Uh, in 2016, 58% of the pedal cyclist fatalities did not occur uh, at intersection. 71% of the pedal cyclist fatalities occurred in urban area. So it was very important to, to select the city and the road that was important for us. So the study sh uh, area should be selected based on a different factor, population, number of bicycle, traffic condition, passing distance regulation. Different cities were uh, analyzed and two cities were selected, Lansing, Michigan, and South Bend, Indiana. So in a Lansing, Michigan, we had a total number of 143,000 data frame, about 239 minutes data collection, and 378 vehicle maneuver were detected. And the different city, different road was uh, scanned, uh, West and East Kalamazoo, Collision Grove Road, uh, Kavanaugh Road, and the Miller Road. And that one is a map of the road that we had, two lane, three lane with a different uh, speed limit. And in the South Bend, a total number of 125,000 data frames were analyzed, and uh, about two, uh, 209 minutes data collection, and 452 vehicle maneuver were detected, and the different road was uh, studied. And that one is the picture of the roads and in the South Bend, Indiana. This one is a result of the West Kalamazoo Street. That one was the relation between the vehicle speed, bike speed, and the longitude of sands. As you can see here, this, uh, the, this picture is representative of the vehicle in passing zone, and that one is a relation in the vehicle in the approaching zone. As you can see in the approaching zone, with the increase of the speed of the bicycle, the speed of the vehicle was increased and the longitude descent between the bicycle and the vehicle was changed. In the passing zone, as you can see here, with the increase of the speed, the longitude descent was increased. And in approaching zone, it's just like the different shape and different things. That was the 3D model of the three factors. As you can see, the red, the red color here show to around 12 feet far between the bicycle and the vehicle. And uh, as you can see here, with the increase of the speed in a two and three lane road, with the speed limit of 25 miles per hour, the distance was increased. Doesn't make sense sometimes, but it's the human interaction. The human interaction is not predictable. It's related to the different factor. It's not just related to the uh, speed. It's just related to the driver speed, to the bicycle speed, uh, vehicle speed, and the distance and the condition, like the what time of the day, how is the condition of the road on the surface. That all can affect it. This one is for Collision Grove Road in a, um, in a Lansing. And as you can see here, that's the difference. A two lane road with a speed limit of 30 mile, far, 30 mile, far, mile per hour. So that show with the increase of the speed, the distance is around four or five feet away between the vehicle and between the uh, bicycle. And with the increase, the people try to keep the speed at the same speed in a passing zone. And in approaching zone, that was a different scenario. 
the approaching zone, as you can see, with the increase of the speed, the distance is going to be go up. So that means if they are driving faster, they try to be away from the bicycle when they want to overtaking of the bicycle. So that's important things. So this one is a Lincoln Way in Indiana. India, uh, in Indiana. That one is a three-lane road with a bike lane and shadow. So as you can see, with the increase of the speed of the bike, the, increase, uh, the speed of the vehicle was uh, increased, and the distance was not changed that too much. So they have the, 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 the same speed with the increase of the speed, same distance with the increase of the speed. And same things for approaching zone. So that show in Indiana that they don't have any regulation or standard, like a low, uh, like passing low, three feet or four feet. They are keeping the same distance before they are arriving to the bicycle and when they are next to the bicycle. So that's very important. This one is a Portage Avenue in uh, uh, Indiana too. Again, same scenario. The people in uh, Indiana, they don't have any passing law, but they try to keep the distance same when they are approaching and when they, passing, when they are passing the, the bicycle. So that's very important. So we can find what's the reason of the passing law, what's they can affect it uh, in our environment. This one is a trajectory data for that uh, four city. As you can see, it's a top picture. Each color there representative of one vehicle. So how they are moving before they are arriving to the bicycle and when they are passing the bicycle. Uh, so that was like around 50 vehicle uh, maneuver trajectory. And the down picture here is the trajectory of the bicycle. When the bicycle passing and scanning the environment, that one is the trajectory. So all object was detected in that environment. This one is for Pleasant Grove Road, so it's about uh, 66 trajectory was detected and uh, uh, 66 vehicle was analyzed. And that, uh, th this one is for uh, Lincoln Way and that one's 350, uh, 35 uh, trajectory was detected. And uh, this one is for uh, Portage Avenue and that one's 77 vehicle was detected. So for the conclusion of my study, is a, this study demonstrates that a LiDAR and laser scanner can be used for static and dynamic object detection. Data acquisition and 3D modeling facilitated the evaluation process of the local facility with the regarding of the ADA requirement and the road feature were distinguished from off-road feature. All possible vehicle uh, uh, were to track and analyze and detected and the trajectory was created and the driver behavior were analyzed. And thank you. If you have any question, I would be happy to answer your question. <laughs>